I have the coolest thing to show you today. I've just figured out how to make a type of solar reflecting mirror that is so effective at gathering and focusing sunlight that it even works on a cloudy day. All right, so I'm Ben, and on this channel we explore all kinds of scientific stuff and boil it down to concepts that can be recreated in a barn by a regular guy like me. Now, this is a parabolic reflector, which is a common shape for a solar concentrating mirror. This is not the thing that I'm excited about, but to understand where we're going, we need to understand this first. The key feature of a parabola is that it will take any light that is coming straight down into the mirror and focus it to a central point. Let me grab a laser and we'll get to see a pretty cool demo of how this works. All right, so check this out. As I sweep this laser across the mirror, it consistently aims right at that central target, right on a single point. When the laser is close to the outside of the mirror, the angle of the curve is very steep, causing the light to bounce off at a wide angle before it hits that center point. When you move the beam in closer, the angle of the curve is less steep, causing the light to bounce back up closer to vertical but still right on target. <laughs> Come on, you have to admit, even if you've seen parabolas a hundred times before, that is just magic. So this is the strength of a parabola, that sharp focus on a central point. This can be used to concentrate sunlight to really extreme temperatures, useful for cooking, generating power, or simply warming a building. However, to do this, the light must enter the mirror at exactly 90 degrees straight up and down in relation to the mirror's opening. Tilt the laser even a little bit, and the beam just misses that central point entirely. That means that in order to use a parabolic reflector for solar collection, you have to make the mirror follow the sun as it moves through the sky. Otherwise, you're just completely missing out on most of the energy that could be collected. It's just like frying ants with a magnifying glass, <laughs> which, you know, I'm not condoning, but I know many of you have done it. If the glass is not pointing directly at the sun, you will not get a focused hotspot underneath, and it will definitely not work on a cloudy day. So the strength of this mirror also becomes its weakness. It can achieve incredibly sharp concentration on a single point, but it needs to be aimed very precisely to pull this off. By the way, it's really easy to make a parabolic curve at home. All you need is a piece of chain. Let the chain droop between your fingers, and that is a parabolic curve. Hang this chain from a couple of nails and mist it with spray paint, and there you have a nice dotted line to cut out your framing for a parabolic mirror. And now we get to the good stuff. Theoretically, a parabola is the ideal shape for maximum concentration on a tiny, tiny point. But think for a minute about how you might actually use a solar concentrator for practical purposes. Why would you need a mirror to focus on what is basically an infinitely small point when the intended target is probably going to be a fairly large physical object, like a steel pipe to heat water. Sure, you could place the pipe so that it surrounds the parabola's focal point, but this is no longer the situation where a parabola is ideal. It turns out that this, the size of your real physical target, completely changes what shape of mirror is ideal to focus onto it. Did you know that? How did I not know that? The fact that we do not need to focus on an arbitrarily tiny point frees us up to do some really cool stuff. So here's the trick. In this setup, I have my laser mounted to this little metal swivel here, bouncing off of a mirror and hitting this piece of pipe. Now, in a real solar concentrating setup, if this is my target, I don't care if the light is focused on this side of the target or all the way around to the back. As long as the light is focused somewhere on this pipe, it's still heating the liquid that's inside of this or whatever I happen to be doing. I don't mind as long as the laser does not completely miss wherever that dot falls. Now, have you noticed what I am able to do in this setup? I am changing the input angle of the light source quite significantly, and it still 
stays on target. That is something which we've seen is completely impossible to do with a parabolic reflector if you are focusing to a single point. When your target is a three-dimensional real object, you are able to accept light from a variety of input angles and still have them land on target. And we can optimize for this to make a mirror that can concentrate all the light that is coming from the entire sky onto our target at once. Awesome. This is a compound parabolic mirror. And you can see that even in my workshop, if I just vaguely aim this towards the lights, this mirror catches all of that light and focuses it onto the pipe. It barely matters where I aim this. That pipe stays lit up. You can see why this would work on a cloudy day. It catches light from all over the place. The laser makes this crystal clear. The light stays on target, even if I sweep over the mirror at a variety of angles. So a compound parabolic curve. I have no idea how to explain this with math, but fortunately I have figured out a simple way to make this complex shape using a speed square and a piece of string. A different way to make an ordinary parabola starts by screwing a straight edge to my bench and placing a pin below it to act as the focal point. A string attached to my speed square is tied off to the pin, and now we have a setup where the string, once it's pulled tight, is acting like a laser being bounced off of a mirror. When I slide the square along, if I move my pen so that the string stays aligned with the square's edge, it traces out a parabolic curve where any light that enters at the same angle as this string will bounce off of this curve and be focused directly onto the pin. This same idea of using a string to trace out the path of a bouncing laser can be modified to give us a compound parabolic curve that is optimized for whatever target we intend to use. Step one to make one of these compound parabolas is to draw two straight lines on our piece of paper. Where they intersect will be the location of our target, and the angle between these lines is actually how we set the range of how wide of an area we want this mirror to collect light from. So why wouldn't we make these lines as wide as possible? Well, for one thing, if you go all the way to a straight line, this just doesn't work. And secondly, if you bring these lines in tighter, you will miss out on some of the light that's coming from beyond these angles, but the light that you do receive will be more highly concentrated. So for good solar projects, a good rule of thumb is basically to use an angle anywhere between 20 and 40 degrees, with the tighter angle being better optimized for direct sun and the wide angle being better for cloudy weather. This time the straight edge, which is the guide for my square, needs to be held down at a 90 degree angle from one of the intersecting lines we've just drawn. One half of our reflector will be drawn at a time, and it doesn't matter which side we start with. Now the point of this is that the size and shape of our target matters. So if you intend to use something like a water pipe as your target, get yourself a hole saw and drill out a wooden plug of approximately the same diameter. This needs to be held down at the intersection of the two lines. By the way, we can optimize these mirrors for any shape. Just make sure that the block of wood or whatever you pin down here is the same shape as your intended target. The last step in the setup is to place a pin into the side of our target at the same angle as this line, which we used to set up the guide rail for the square. The end of the string coming off of the square is wrapped around the pin, and now we place our drawing instrument against the string, guiding it around to touch the bottom of our target. In this position, the string is pulled tight, making sure it's lined up with the edge of the square and secured. The compound parabolic curve is ready to be drawn. Start by unwrapping the pen from around the target until it starts moving out into open space where the square begins to have some influence. Then begin sliding the square along the rail in unison with the pen, moving each as needed to keep the string parallel with the square's edge. This combined action of the string unwrapping from the target mixed with the movement of the square is what makes this a compound curve. Any light that comes in at the angle of the string will hit the top edge of the target, with steeper angles of light simply being reflected to a lower impact point. Amazing, isn't it? 
No math required. To make the other half of the curve, just reverse the setup, moving the board and the pin to be positioned above the second line drawn earlier. This is the maximally efficient shape that if drawn perfectly, will cause the target to intercept 100% of all light that enters the lens anywhere between this range of predetermined angles. There are a few tips that are not immediately obvious to make this process go smoothly, and the first is to cut a tiny piece of a plastic straw to slip over your pen or pencil. This keeps the string slightly elevated so that the pen doesn't jump over it as you're drawing. The second tip is to be sure you're using a string that has very little stretch, but is also very flexible. A thin steel wire can work okay for this, but the best option is braided fishing line. This is basically the strongest, thinnest string that you can buy, which has almost no stretch. So now you have a compound parabolic curve traced out on a piece of paper or plywood, and to turn it into a real mirror, simply cut out the shape and use that as a template to make as many copies as you would like. I found one of the easiest things that can be used from here to line a wooden frame is aluminum flashing, or any sheet metal really. Aluminum is the easiest because you can hold it to the frame with thumbtacks, pushing them through the metal without even using a hammer. The aluminum itself is fairly reflective and could be used as is, but to increase performance, you can line the trough with peel and stick mirror sheets. Mount your target at the focal point, and we're ready to go. Well, it is a perfect day for testing because with these clouds, I don't think the parabolic reflector is gonna do us much good. There is nothing to aim at up there. So let's see if the compound parabola can do much better. Both of these reflectors have been covered in a transparent layer of plastic, which is an easy way to increase the performance of any kind of solar concentrator. This adds a little bit of a greenhouse effect and also allows the target to warm up without fighting wind and rain cooling it back down. So after allowing a little bit of time for the targets in these mirrors to both warm up, the way that I'll take my reading is with a thermal camera, and I'll take the reading from the inside of each of these pipes. This setup has a pretty serious disadvantage because in this, I have a heavy cast iron plumbing pipe as the target, much larger than this little pipe in the parabolic setup, which is a little aluminum thing that has very low thermal mass compared to this heavy chunk of steel. So if this shows a warmer temperature, we really know that it is kicking out a lot more heat than this setup here. It should be pretty obvious looking at these that I am not intending to build something that's actually gonna <laughs> last out here in the elements. This is just for a test. Uh, the same design could easily be turned into something more permanent that could actually stand up to some wind and some rain. Don't take this too seriously as far as the actual design elements go. It's just a concept. We'll see how well it performs. Maybe build something in a future video that's a little more durable. All right, so I'm kicking the thermal camera on now, and we can take a look from the front at both of our setups. Boy, does it look like that target in the compound parabolic mirror is a lot warmer than the one in the ordinary parabolic mirror, despite the massive difference in thermal mass. Uh, what I will do, I have this one closed off with a little cup here to keep the heat in. Let's see what temperature we've got inside this pipe about 91 degrees Fahrenheit. That is a pretty good temperature considering the air temperature right now is about 60. Not a bad result. If your water were 90 degrees in 60 degree cloudy weather, that's a win for me. Let's see about the interior of this pipe, which I have to measure from the back. We are looking at a temperature <laughs> 72 degrees Fahrenheit. 20 degrees difference. That is so crazy. 20 degrees difference with a much smaller target, way lower thermal mass. How do you beat that? Now, that is with the stipulation that we are looking at these performances during cloudy weather. Uh, this parabolic mirror, if it were a sunny day and I aimed this directly at the sun, it could probably melt that pipe. That's how hot it would get. Uh, this one probably would not melt, but with this one, Boy, it just has some serious advantages in cloudy weather and not needing tracking to keep following the sun throughout the sky. 
I am gonna call that a successful test. Holy cow. Wow, even look at the back of the board here where the target on the inside is transferring heat through the plywood. There is some serious warming power <laughs> in this compound parabolic setup. I need to throw some footage in here of me using this earlier in sunlight, how the rays are bouncing off the mirror and still all converging on that target. It's just amazing to see. Now, listen, obviously these setups are nothing that you would wanna leave outdoors for an extended period of time. These are simple tests. If you wanted something that was durable enough to withstand the elements, you could just take the same shape, cut it into more durable materials, all sorts of ways you can make these reflectors. But this design, this compound parabola, just amazing. Even in cloudy weather, we are getting very warm temperatures. Well, I think it's safe to say that this works pretty well. I need to show you one more very useful design for a compound parabolic mirror, which uses a flat target at the bottom of the mirror instead of the three-dimensional target suspended above the surface. This starts with the same drawing pattern of two intersecting lines to determine the light acceptance angle of the mirror. Somewhere between these two lines, we draw a third line straight across. Where we draw this is what determines the size of our target area. Now place a pin at one of these intersections and whichever side you choose, that is the line which the guide board will need to be set against at a 90 degree angle, similar to our earlier setup to make the other type of compound parabolic mirror. The speed square is now set on the board, the string is tied to the pin, and your writing instrument is placed at the opposite intersection. Once the string is tightened up with the square aiming right at the pen's starting location, the curve can be traced out. We have just formed a curve that will cause any light entering the lens between these two angles to hit this bottom surface. To complete the other side, we just switch over the board and pin to repeat the process. This is the ideal shape to focus light on a flat collector. This video goes over some very practical geometry principles, and if you're interested to learn more, and especially if you would like to understand the math side of things, check out my sponsor, Brilliant.org. They provide thousands of hands-on interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI, with a particular focus on helping give you the tools needed to feel confident in your ability to learn anything. You will find in any Brilliant course that your problem-solving skills and critical thinking are put to the test in a really good way, building knowledge in bite-sized pieces that fit together perfectly to teach you a brand new subject. There are tons of interactive visuals and problems in every course that help the subject to make intuitive sense, very much like the demos I use in my own videos. Brilliant's newly updated math courses help you establish a strong foundation in algebra and then build on that to conquer calculus and beyond with an emphasis on problem solving and reasoning throughout. With this, you can strengthen your logical reasoning and problem solving skills with lessons that give the perfect level of challenge. You can try everything Brilliant has to offer free for 30 days by using my link, brilliant.org forward slash Nighthawk. And that link will also get you 20% off an annual premium subscription. My intent, as usual, with this video is not to give you the final word on exactly how to tackle all of the details of a solar concentrator build, but I hope I've given you some new information to chew on. There are more resources in the video description that include technical drawings for making compound parabolic mirrors, along with some details for doing various calculations like figuring out the focal intensity of various layouts. Plenty of detail to dig into if you'd like to go deeper. If you find what I'm doing here valuable and would like to support these videos, please check out my Patreon. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.